What's up everybody, For the Winitachi here, you know what it is, and for those of you that tune in to youtube.com slash For the Winitachi, you'll notice that I have a Pokevlog series going on, but this episode's going to be a little bit different. It is going to be a side episode. I will not be vlogging per se in this episode, but I'll be giving you guys more in-depth guides, and I'll be doing this quite often as well when I get to specific areas and points within the game. But this video, we're going to be focusing on the user interface, and I want to go completely in-depth on what you can do. As you'll notice in the background, there's an animated version of Google Maps, and it is the actual maps on where you are standing and your location. You'll see your avatar on the center of the screen. I can go ahead and zoom in by sliding my fingers apart, or I can zoom out by sliding my fingers together. There's also a bottom right feature which is showing you a uh, Pokemon that are nearby you'll notice that there are little footprints underneath the closer they are the less amount of footprints they have the farther they are the most that they can have is currently three next up you'll notice on the top right of your screen there is a compass with a red arrow and a gray arrow red arrow of course pointing up to north and then the gray arrow pointing down south You'll also notice throughout this video there is a swirly Pokeball on the top left. Now, that is simply just basically your game loading. You'll notice that it's trying to load some features here and there, or it might be trying to load a Pokemon into your game, or you just caught a Pokemon and it's trying to load it into your Pokedex to show that you've caught it. You'll notice that happening quite often. On the bottom left, you'll notice your avatar. It is the picture of your avatar, your current level, and your name, as well as your experience bar. I'm almost at level 4, so my experience bar is quite full. If you go ahead and click on that, it'll bring it more in depth. You'll notice your name, the avatar on how he looks. You can go ahead and spin him around, see how much swag you've got. Level 3, how much experience points you've got. You'll also notice a journal that you can go ahead and click on. It'll show you when you've reached a Pokestop, Pokemon that you've caught, and so on. You'll also notice that there is a team when you started and how many Poke Coins you have. You gain Poke Coins throughout the game. You can also purchase them, which I'll be going over later, as well as your team, which is a specific gym location that you are currently at. You'll also notice below that there's achievements. There's a Jogger achievement, Kanto, Collector, Scientist, and there's so much more. For example, you'll notice the Bird Keeper achievement. I have it at 1 out of 10, which is this one right here. It's caught one flying type Pokemon. I need to catch 10 and then I'll get the achievement completed. However, the Kanto achievement only required me for the first part of the achievement to register 5 Pokemon in my Pokedex, which I did. Now I have that achievement. The next achievement requires me to get 50, which is why I have a bronze medal within my achievement instead of a question mark, because I've gotten the first part of that achievement. So, you'll be able to get achievements down here. Next up you'll notice a Pokeball in the center of your screen. Now this is where all the goodness is going to happen. You've got your Pokedex, which I'll go ahead and click on. It'll show you all Pokemon you have caught and seen. Pokemon that you've caught, you'll be able to actually see them in complete details. And then Pokemon you have seen, you'll be seeing them in a grayed out format. So you won't be able to actually see them in complete detail. Next up, you'll have your backpack, aka your items icon. It'll show you what you have in your store. I, you can currently have 350 items, but you are able to upgrade this through a different feature and a different method. I currently have two incenses, I've got Pokeballs, a camera, egg incubator, basically the basic items that you can have in your bag. You'll also notice there's a Pokemon icon, or a Pokemon tab, which currently shows you all the Pokemon you have in your party. For the basics, you can currently hold up to 250 Pokemon and 9 eggs. You are able to upgrade that through different means as well. And you'll be able to go ahead and click on these Pokemon. You'll be able to check them out. And then it'll show you how much candies you got, what it takes to level them up, what it takes to evolve them, so on and so forth. And it currently shows you your combat power. I've got mine listed from combat power, but you are able to order them in, order them in any way possible. And last but not least is the actual shop. Now this is where you'll be able to purchase your items. For example, Pokeballs, Incense, Lucky Eggs, Lure Modules, Egg Incubators, Bag Upgrades, Pokemon Storage Upgrades, and of course the Pokemon Coins with real life money. Now on the top it'll show you how many Poke Coins you have. Let me get up there. Sorry about that. It'll show you how many Poke Coins you have. You can purchase them in bulks, and of course, the bigger bulk, the cheaper the actual items are. 
Pokeballs are basically items that will help you capture wild Pokemon. Incenses are uh, items that lure Pokemon to your specific location for 30 minutes. Eggs are uh, eggs that uh, it's a lucky egg filled with happiness and it earns double the XP for 30 minutes. You've also got lure modules which you can insert into specific Pokestop locations and it attracts Pokemon for 30 minutes. You've got that egg incubator which helps you hatch your eggs that you get from Pokestops. You've also got the bag upgrade, which will uh, m increase your max number of items you can carry by 50. Your Pokemon storage upgrade, same thing, max number of Pokemon by 50. And that's about it from the Pokemon shop itself. Methods on earning coins and all that good stuff, I'll be going over in another video. Last but not least, you can go ahead and check out the tips. And of course, the game settings. You've got battery saver mode if you want to go ahead and use that, but it does not do too much. But I thought I had mine on, so that's why I'm putting mine back on. You've got sound effects, vibration, music. The less amount of stuff that you have going on, the better. And then, of course, you've got the quick start, the help center, report high priority issues about Pokemon Go. And, of course, you can log out through that method as well. So let me know if you have any questions about the user interface in Pokemon Go. What do you want to see guide-related coming out soon? Thank you very much for tuning in. For the win, Itachi is... Out.